Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. It's been a long ass time, because <laughs> Dragalia is like, in waiting until, uh, chances are the next gala banner, which is gonna come out pretty soon, I would say, as soon as this banner ends. But hey, they have some other stuff kind of going up, which is basically that they gave five more dragons their unbounds, and maybe some of these dragons will have a different kind of effect. So I want to look at them and see what they do, go over them, stuff like that. And that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. Tell me what you feel about these uh, dragons, the direction they're going. Is there any specific one you can't wait to see with their weird mechanic, how they're going to try and slap some other stuff on top of and see how it goes? But uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be today's video, so let's get into it. So Arctos, who I actually remember back in the day, he used to d have a function, which was inflicting stun on High Dragon Trial Midgar Soma and stopping his like big attack. Because back in the day, it was easier to just stun him out of the attack than it was to actually fight him legit. So <laughs> if you're wondering, hey, did weird cheese strats always exist? The answer is yes. They always have. So he says stun effect stays the same as always. Flame strength and crit damage 6. If the user is attuned to flame, increase strength by 50% and add 60% to the modifier applied to crit damage. Mm. If the user is attuned to flame, grant the user a critical damage surge effect at the start of the quest for 180 seconds. During critical damage surge, the modifier applied to the user's critical damage is increased by 30%. Alright, that sounds pretty decent, especially for events that are um very short uh, obviously i actually can't think of many units at the top of my head that are super crit focused i know there are in other elements but for fire which one am i thinking of is it galaran is it not galaranzel kid ranzel is that maybe the only one i'm really thinking of hmm yeah there's not really many that come to, if you know any <laughs> that would benefit from using arto specifically because really it, it, in most cases i think you still would want to go over some of the gala and maybe even some of the other unbounded um dragons it really specifically needs to be one that can take advantage of this crit damage stuff because again this crit damage stuff 90 percent crit damage and 50 percent strength ain't too shabby especially again if the fight is under 180 seconds you'll just kill them quick and you're good Next, we got Nimus, who's funny enough not that old in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> Great grand scheme of things. He's definitely newer than some of the ones they've specifically gone over. So, Pancake Paradise restores HP to the user, raises Dragon Gauge, and extends Shapeshift. Good, good, good. I mean, not, not amazing or anything, but still. Abilities, Water Strength, and Crit Damage. That's why they picked him. So, he's the exact same, but for water. Huh. Who can I think of that is kind of super crit focused in? I think it, this is maybe more telling of how many actual crit units I use. Because <laughs> I also can't really think of any for water. But hey, if you got one in there, Nimbus is there for you. Next along, now I know a unit that can use long long. But just to be sure, wind strength and crit damage, um, 6. Critical wind, critical damage surge. 30% same as always long long in my memory always was really good with How am I forgetting her name one moment? I use her all the time Lin Yu was her name, but I was getting it confused with Li Yu from Genshin Impact And I was like that can't be right because there are two names that kind of start with L I And then it kind of goes off from there, but I was like oh shit. Well, there you go long long should be pretty solid with her again. I think even now I still kind of use them with her, even with all the better wind dragons, mainly because I gave my better wind dragons to other people. And I knew for a fact that she could still work perfectly fine with Long Long, so I kind of kept Long Long on her. So kind of nice to have Long Long still be very useful for her specifically. And if there's anyone else out there who can benefit from having a lot of crit damage, then Long Long will be there, especially if it's a short event. Next, Liger. Let me guess about you, buddy. Oh, no, you're not. Liger. Okay, so let me look. He inflicts paralysis. HP and strength, 40%. Okay. If the user is attuned to light, grant the user surge of strength for 180 and 40%. Hmm. Hmm. It's okay. I still think chances are for light. Actually, I, th I think it might actually be better than okay because of the terrible choices you have for dragons on light. 
So beggars can't be choosers. That's still pretty damn solid. A base 40% HP and strength, and then for the beginning 180 seconds, kind of getting 40% more, so making him basically 80% strength and 40% HP. It's not bad, and again, for a short event, that works perfectly fine, and a lot of these dragons, again, I feel, are not specifically for um, people like me who have crazy dr gala dragalias. They're for people who don't really have them, and again, this this is actually useful for me because I actually don't have that many good light dragons. I keep getting the door, and he unfortunately kind of gets screwed over by Nihility, so I can't actually use him all that much with a lot of other people. Um, especially for Light, that has so many of their best dragons are limited, it's kind of nice to have more options, so I'm always pro more options, honestly. Even if they're not specifically, not every single one of these needs to be for me, but a lot of the time it's not me who needs the most help, it's people who are starting out and still trying to figure things out. Next, Nyarlathotep. Uh, this guy is a weird one from what I remember. Strength 50% and Surge of Strength 2. If the user is attuned to Shadow, increase the strength by 50%. In addition, grant the user uh, for 180 seconds 40% more strength. So that's 90%? Jesus. Moonlit Howl 2. If the user is attuned to Shadow, grant the user a Bloody Tongue effect for 20 seconds when HP drops to 30%. This effect grants the user a 1U shield that nullifies damage less than 60% of their maximum HP and increases their strength by 30%. These effects do not stack and you are, and are lost upon taking damage. Okay. Moonlit Howl still feels like uh, it's unfortunately only one use only, so uh, you're not going to be very... It's gonna the, the, In order for you to get the shield, it's just not very likely for it to happen, but when it's there for the brief second, it's kind of nice. Maybe might save might save you, maybe not, may not. Uh, the thing that's nice here is having a 90% strength dragon for light. Uh, it's going to be very nice to have, again, if you are a brand new player to the game. 90%, again, is not anything to scoff at. It's kind of one of those things of like, if we actually start saying that 90% for a dragon is not good enough, then I think that we're going to run into some problems. It's perfectly good enough. You just have to always remember, as long as it is a short event, you're going to be solid. Longer events, obviously you should look for some more options. But for short events, which is a, a lot of events in Dragalia are very short, perfectly fine. So, yeah, that's kind of the new crop of these dudes. Interesting that they decided to skip over some of the skill dragons, because I want to say, like, for example, Nimis may be a crit dragon, but some of the skill dragons, like, um, Shinobu, Shinobi, Shinobu or Shinobi? I think it's Shinobi. Uh, Shinobi, Siren, and other stuff like that were released way before Nimbus, and they decided to skip over them. I'm going to assume because they're still trying to fine-tune exactly how to make them good. Because to be fair, when they launched, they were the best dragons around up until Gala Dragons became a, th became a thing. So the balance of them is probably going to be a little bit more difficult compared to these kind of dragons. And it's kind of nice to also give these older dragons kind of a spotlight for a bit. Lord knows that the skill dragons have been out and about for much longer than all of these dudes. So it's good to kind of see them back again. Like for example, almost no one was using Nimbus. Even when Nimbus was new, I don't remember like anyone going, oh my god, Nimbus. Now though, if you find something that could use crit damage, which I think... I actually looked a little bit and said Galaxy was one of them. I don't know if Gal I thought Gal not Galaxy. Galaxy would be useful with Arctos, my bad. I actually wonder if her brother would be good here with Nemes, but I actually don't know enough about the units. Um, Arctos would be pretty solid because of the crits damage stuff, so if you're not specifically controlling her and stuff and she's just on the AI, could be a nice dragon to have. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Hope to have more Dragalia stuff as soon as Dragalia is done taking its little nap. I've actually been enjoying just kind of like relaxing, doing some Dragalia dailies coming in. Kind of going at my own speed, especially after anniversary, man. There's always so much to do at anniversary that you kind of need a break away from Dragalia for a bit to kind of unwind and kind of reset yourself and be like, okay, I just finished crazy grinding. Let me not crazy grind for a bit and then come back and be ready to crazy grind again. But yeah, end of the video, everyone. Have a good night. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.